this person here is called Percy Fawcett. Now he was, who was he, Green? In 1908 he was commissioned by the Royal Geographic Society of London to map the borders of Peru in a dispute. And right. he came across an incident which you're going to talk about. Right, yeah. He actually went down, he was last seen in a place called the Mato Grosso in Brazil. And what apparently happened, to cut a long story short, he seems like a very arrogant man and he slapped a child, one of the native child, children, for doing something, maybe looking in his bag or something, I don't know what he was doing. But the, native, the Indians turned on him and his crew and killed the whole lot and buried him. So that was the last you ever heard of uh, this guy. Percy Fawcett. But interestingly enough, have you got that writing up about him? Or not? Uh, yes, it's over here. Uh, he actually found the same channels as we, as we found. Oh my goodness. Uh, in when he was looking, and he was actually at, around a confluence where we, not the same one, but another one, you know? And uh, so, would you read that there? What is, just don't read the whole thing, just pick out a few points. We were drifting easily along the sluggish current not far below the confluence of the Rio Negro when almost under the bow there appeared a triangular head and several feet of undulating body. It was a giant anaconda. I sprang for my rifle as the creature began to make its way up the bank and hardly waiting to aim I smashed a .44 soft-nosed bullet into its spine ten feet below its wicked head. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. Its body was not thick for such a colossal length. Such large speci specimens as this may not be common, but the trails in the swamps reach a width of six feet and support the statements of Indians and rubber pickers that the anaconda sometimes reaches an incredible size, altogether dwarfing that shot by me of 67 feet. Is that it? Yeah, that'll do.